again, it's Cliff here. Another exciting episode of Rapid Turn. Um, I'm going to make a bunch of parts for the Impact Tolerant Touch Pro in this video. Video 24, I think. Um, video 23 was a series of tests trying to get to the bottom of the surface finish issue. Um, and it's pretty boring stuff. So I don't think I'll actually publish that video. I could see you all yawning in your droves if I did that. Um, so I'll just skip that video and leave it unpublished, video 23. So we're on to video 24, uh, machining up parts, and um, I'll get underway. Oh, let's start machining the impact tolerant touch probe arbors. I won't be boring and start at the beginning. Let's start towards the end. So we've got the, uh, the arbors for the impact tolerant touch probe. They're made out of a uh, heat treatable alloy steel and they're hardened and cylindrically ground. So the first stage is, that, that's the part there. The first stage is to rough them out, um, then get them heat treated and then cylindrically grind them. So they have a little thread on the end um, and there's different diameters and um, internal bore diameters. So just a quick overview, we've set up rapid turn with our gang tooling platform with four tools in use. We're starting off with tool one, a uh, main carbide turning tool, tool two, a threading tool, tool three, an internal boring tool, and tool four, a reamer. I'm just going to run the rapid turn for a couple of minutes just to take the chill off the casting as I learned from those earlier experiments that um, it's a good idea to get the spindle headstock temperature stabilized a little bit so you can hold tolerance. Okay, let's get underway. There we are. That's fine. The arbor has a 14 millimeter thread and that's not brown, so I have to get that fairly close. And that's pretty good. It's just 
to here over 14 millimeters. It's a good fit on the nut, but I probably should aim for about another hundredth smaller. So we have the internal 30 degree center for the cylindrical grinding and we have the thread on the end. For the pretension nut to allow the concentricity adjustment. I've got to keep a little bit of an eye on the swath build up so that I don't get um, too tangled up, um, especially with all this wire travel between the gang tooling positions. I put an old piece of conduit over the sensor cable because it's a pretty light cable and I'm getting blue hot chips fire flying in all directions so this is just a temporary fix um, just so I can get the production out the power of CNC set it conservatively let it run automatically and leave it behind And then I can go back to running more of the other end, roughing them out on my manual lathe. And through the old outdoors window, I've got the CNC chunking away in the background. Well, this video is partly about um, the journey I'm on, trying to decide what machine tool capacity I need and uh, maybe it's helpful to some of you people you know you're looking at machining up a, a part like that um, and I've got a manual lathe and uh, I've got rapid turn and I can uh, vertical spindle turn as well but I don't have a full CNC lathe yet I probably should get one um, I, I imagine I'll have one within a year or two um, but in the meantime I've still got a few decisions to make production planning is a bit like design you know again you're gazing into the future you don't know what's ahead you're trying to make some decisions about best way to machine one side and rough it out and the best way to machine the other side and how you can automate it how you can make it less boring and more efficient and the whole process is a fascinating process of design and it's not until you're finished can you really assess whether you've headed in the right direction or not so I'm sure some of you can identify with these kind of dilemmas that we machinists face and uh, can follow me on this journey. So I'm ramping up production of the Hallmark Impact Tolerant Touch Probes components. So we're going from the bar stock to stage one, stage two, then heat treatment, then cylindrical grinding, Finally, assembly. When I set up the uh, rapid turn gang tooling platform, I just do a rough sketch showing the different tool positions, and it rem it'll remind me next time when I want to run these parts, and I can just. Um, jot down the tool numbers and the, off, the Y offsets and um, just a few notes it really helps um, to speed up setting it up next time and then you usually find a couple more refinements that you can add on your page so good old fashioned A4 pencil sketches uh, big time saver in the long run This was all done with PathPilot's conversational programming, really user friendly. Um, most of you will be familiar with this, 
You've got OD turn, ID, face chamfer, groove part, drill and thread. And you can append together the different files just by ticking the boxes and put it together in a file. And you can uh, Here's your file here. Hand code in a few Y moves for your gang tooling. And then um, you can edit them around. Here, yeah, this is a new facility that Pathpilot has that shows you all your shows you all of the conversational codes here. And you can juggle them around in whichever order you like and make other adjustments very user friendly and easy to use. I know it sounds like I'm promoting rapid turn now um, but I think it's important to be really positive um, because at times I've had to be quite critical and there's been a few little hiccups and snags along the way so when it goes well I think it's important to balance that with some positivity um, about the capacity that you're getting for a very low price. I've talked in another video about CNC versus a manual lathe for um, production and it varies from part design to part design and quantity to quantity but um, it's important to compare a modern manual lathe which has um, quick change tool post and um, you set up all your various tools and you have a digital readout system which has got tool allocation or tool offsets so each tool you select here and then you can just machine to um, zero zero or whatever way you set it up okay so tool one is our master tool and we face the end and set the XDRO on zero <laughs> Okay, that's the outside diameter turned. Now we're going to put in the TTS undercut tool and select on the DRO the tool offset number one. This is a high speed steel tool, so we're going to use some coolant. That's our TTS undercut tool. Now we're going to select tool offset number two and uh, do the machining on the end. This tool is going to do several operations. It's going to provide the centers for cylindrical grinding, provide the thread clearance. for another portion of the job. We're going to put in DRO tool offset number three. 
and do the radius entry for the TTS. And where a CNC lathe usually beats a manual lathe very clearly is in the area of drilling the center hole. I mean you can have a digital scale on your quill which helps a lot. But it's a much slower process. You've got to manually retract the drill. So that's a big part of the job, doing the internal work. But of course a manual lathe has got the power and the rigidity to do really heavy duty machining and tapping and so on. So you'd have to have a big CNC lathe to compete to be able to do this type of work. The CNC lathes don't have the human error problem, and that's a huge advantage. You don't get so bored, you can walk off and do something else. So, all in all, CNC wins hand down, hands down. As long as you've got room for one and you can justify it with the work. I'm just reading out to find a little bit. There we are, it's the part done. But you try keeping that up for a hundred parts and you're a better man than me. So in theory on a modern manual lathe with a quick change tool post and a uh, digital scale on your tailstock and um, digital readout with uh, tool offsets you can machine a bunch of parts really quickly in theory. Um, the problem is that just being able to concentrate hour after hour doing that type of work without making a mistake is a pretty difficult task and um, much better to run a CNC if you can afford it and justify it and then you can go away and do something else with your brain. Of course the key thing is you need to be able to run your CNC automatically. It's no good if you're there flicking out swath and adjusting the coolant because really all you're doing is saving yourself boredom. You're not actually running the machine while you're able to do something else. So it's important to identify that you need to run your computer control machine automatically and perhaps just pop over to it every five minutes to change the uh, stock. If you've had a look at my uh, bench grinding tool sharpening videos, I go over the importance of 
grinding a twist drill cutting edges central um, it's very easy to drill a hole that runs out that doesn't run true and there's a couple of tricks to getting it running true one is that your drill needs to be ground really accurately the other one is that your center drill needs to be or, what it, or your spotting drill that you're using to start the hole needs to be started very gently so that it doesn't develop a run out because any run out at the beginning of the drill of the drilling operation will soon project itself into a further and further run out so get that uh, center drill or spotting drill very gently started and running very concentric and then you might not realize that you've drilled your hole um, but it's actually wandered off and you may be making reject parts so it's a good idea to run the uh, the lathe and actually hold the drill and you can feel it I've put a dial indicator on here to show you but you can feel it um, and if it's running out this will be trembling quite a lot here just letting it run like that's not so good because the drill's not accurate but if you hold it you can see there there's only about a uh, there hundredth of a millimeter so there's only a thou or two run out off center uh, which is about as good as you can get with a one drill pilot drill through the middle um, quite often they'll be running out a long way uh, and you don't realize it unless you do this very simple test finally tool for parting tool You can see I've made these parts via two different methods, manual lathe turning and rapid turn. And um, did I make the right choice? Well, with hindsight, I think I could have done both operations on rapid turn. But then again, another thing to consider is that rapid turn can run automatically while I'm doing the manual machining. And I get a bit of exercise walking from one part of the shop to the other, plugging in the part, a bit of variety, and I've got two machines running at once. Um, the big lathe, the big manual lathe, has got a lot more power and I can take really big cuts. So it's kind of um, debatable as to which w would have been the best process, but I'm pretty comfortable with the way I'm doing it at the moment. Um, it ha has been a reasonably good decision. Um, long term though, I do want to get a full CNC lathe. <laughs> automatically so I can go away and do something else and it doesn't really matter how long it takes as long as it runs automatically threading Clinical grinding centers and reaming. That's more than enough for one video. Thanks for watching, guys. Um, I really appreciate the comments and uh, 
posts to threads and emails that I've been getting from you and it's been really good to realize there's a lot of other folk out there on a similar journey to me and um, and having a similar dilemmas to me and, and that have empathy and understanding of what this is all about and I and it's really neat to hear when people say that I've helped to motivate them or inspire them that really makes my journey a lot more fulfilling so thanks for your feedback and thanks for watching cheers Thank <laughs> you.